ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Weston Racing. And in today's video, I want you to think back to a little while ago. Welcome back to Weston Racing. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at wave one of the Hot Wheels Monster Trucks discount truck. Now I want you to think back to a little sooner while ago. Welcome back to Weston Racing. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at series two of the Hot Wheels Monster Trucks discount truck. You may remember that we did a thing on the channel a while back, which were these Hot Wheels Monster Trucks discount trucks, where they were dollar store downgrades of the 164 scale trucks into 170th scale. Pretty interesting little, you know, concept that they were doing. Well, the thing is, is that Spin Master themselves had a very similar thing going on at Family Dollar or Dollar General, one of the two. Basically, they were the same concept. They were little uh crappier made 170th scale versions of the monster jam trucks and they had a few series of these going they've been going on forever well in 2024 what they decided to do is they decided to really follow suit of the crappy dollar store hot wheels monster trucks and they decided to make these which i am hereby counting as the first ever wave of spin master monster jam discount trucks I'm not going to refer to these as 170th scales, which is what I will refer to as the other series. These are the discount trucks because these I'm pretty sure are made entirely out of plastic and they are interesting. The first thing I wanna point out is the package on these. If you look at it, you'll notice it looks like somebody just screenshot the normal Spin Master packaging. And then how do you say it they they like cropped out a bunch of the stuff so it wasn't in there they could have put like series one or something on this little sidebar right here but they didn't which is weird to me also to help you really gauge how small these are here's a 164 scale truck and there's a reason why i picked this one in case if you didn't realize it but yeah they're pretty small 170 scale there's like uh one sixth of a scale smaller than the well that's not true that's not good math there's a reason why i'm not a mathematician anyways yeah we're gonna look at these today and we're gonna start with the grave digger because why not um why not start with the most overrated monster jam truck in all of existence and that's not even an opinion that's a fact at this point um after going to my own monster truck show for the first time ever in my entire life my hatred for Gravedigger, if for, if my hatred for Gravedigger, not for Gravedigger specifically, but for the fan base, got heightened by so much it wasn't even funny. It is, God, it's ridiculous. It's so bad. Anyways, yeah, we're going to start with Gravedigger here. Tiny, cute little Gravedigger. Like I said, the package looks so fake, does it not? Like, these look bootleg. These are official Spin Master product, as you can see. But they look bootleg, which is really weird. And look at the back of the package, and it'll really cement that idea into you. What I find really interesting, though, is that, yes, these are Spin Master product, and these are Monster Jam product. It says right there, Greenbrier International Incorporated. And usually when you see a toy with that stamped on there, that means it was made by the company that makes Spin Master product, or the, sorry, that makes Dollar Tree products. So the fact, basically what I'm saying is, these are technically bootleg. By a weird technicality, these are bootleg products but they're endorsed bootleg products, which makes it really weird. And that's the same thing that's being said for the uh, Hot Wheels Monster Trucks as well. They're not being made by Mattel, but they're Mattel backed, which is really strange. And you get some weird mistakes here and there. But uh, yeah, we're gonna take a look. There's five in this set. I got these uh, when I went back to Oregon a couple weeks ago on my spring break, I went back to Oregon to go see my grandparents and some other people in town and uh, it was pretty cool. I was really happy to see everybody again. It's been a long time. And we went on a bunch of shopping sprees while we were there. One of the places we stopped at was Dollar Tree. And uh, I picked these up because it's amazing to me that a Dollar Tree in a tiny little, you know, city in Oregon is, you know, almost a full six months ahead of my local Dollar Tree, which is usually stocked every month. But, you know, some things fall apart. I think with the whole thing that happened recently where all the Dollar Trees and Family Dollars started closing, I think that might have had something to do with it. But the thing is, is all those Family Dollars and Dollar Trees started closing. I don't think either of my, any of the local Family Dollars or Dollar Trees in my area, I think all six of them are still open. I don't think a single one of them went out of business. So that's really interesting. I guess that's what I get for living in Podunk, Wyoming. <laughs> 
All right, let's take a look at these things, these tiny, these little goofy monster trucks, you know? So these, blech, this is the grave digger, the knockoff plastic grave digger. Now I will say Greenbrier did a good job of copying the look of the Spinmaster chassis, the Spinmaster roll cage into plastic. It has all the detail there. It's just made out of plastic, which I think is really interesting. They did a good job with that. I will give them the thumbs up there. We've got a black body, a green chassis setup, black tires and black rims, no window inserts. I will point that out as well. What I find interesting between these and the Hot Wheels monster trucks is there's no windows, which is really strange. So on the side panel, you got all the grave digger detail here. That is painted on, which is shocking to me. I was not expecting that, but you got all the grave digger details painted on USA Jura logo, Spin Master logo. There are are quite literally no mistakes to be seen on here. I was kind of thinking that maybe they would try to make the truck more realistic and take the extra rings off around the moon, but not really. It seems to me like they did a pretty good job of copying everything over, except for the fact that there's this huge negative space right there. I don't know what that's all about, but yeah, they did a pretty good job of copying all the details over. I really have no complaints about that. Nothing on the front end though. The stripe doesn't go down to the hood. No green detail, no headlights. That's weird. I don't know what that's all about. Got the flames on the top though. Even Hot Wheels, even Dollar Tree, Greenbrier brand Dollar Tree could paint the flames on the inside of the hood. Come on, this is ridiculous. On the roof, we have Gravedigger here with the flames. And then we got Grim with Bad to the Bone there. No detail on the back. So yeah, like, like I said, it's a cheap little knockoff but it's still pretty good for what it is. It is being held together by a Phillips head screw though, which might allow for some interesting customization for, you know, if you're into that, into customizing your trucks, that might lead to you being able to swap the bodies around by the looks of things, which would be pretty cool, right? That'd be neat. But yeah, there you go. That's the grave digger. First one we're gonna look at in today's video. Then we're probably, you know, now that we're through the grave digger and we've kind of seen what these things look like, we're probably just gonna fly through the rest of these, make my life easy, you know? So we'll go with El Toro Loco next. Um, this one's interesting because they decided to make the chassis and the body the same color, which I think looks weird. I don't like that by any means. I think that looks really strange. So, ooh, me. There we go. <laughs> Poke that out so that way I can get the truck. All right, there we go. All righty. So here it is, the El Toro Loco. Now, I have a glaring problem with this one, and it's the fact that they gave El Toro Loco here Trump's haircut, which I think is really strange. And uh, if you don't know what I'm pointing out here, it's the fact that the hair and the horns are one piece, which is not how that works on the real truck or on the 164 die cast. This is painted orange, and then the horns are whatever color they need to be. That sticks out like a sore thumb, by the way. I That is obnoxious. However, I will say all the other detail, they got the flames spot on, which I like. Monster Jam logo there. El Toro Loco, you got the teeth. Uh, I don't like that the teeth, the gums around the teeth are brown. It should be black, but that's whatever. This side's exactly the same, but mirrored. Not a whole lot to see there. Uh, no detail on the top of the truck. I was really hoping they'd do something, like, you know, paint the bowl ring or something, but there is absolutely no detail. Nothing on the tailgate either. This one is really blank and the obvious, you know, stick out hair there. I don't know. This one's weird. I don't, this one just gives me a weird vibe in general. So that's El Toro Loco. On to this one. Now, I'm not going to lie. This, the freaking Dollar Tree did something that Spidmaster couldn't even do. Next up, we have Dragon. And you want to know what I'm going to say? I really think that the whole pairing with the chassis color and the wheel color. I think this works for Dragon. I like the way that this, I, I am a hater. I absolutely hate the Nitro Neon trucks. I think they are the stupidest thing ever. I hate the Mitch Match colors and roll cages, but sometimes they can, sometimes these companies can actually make stuff that works. I like this. I like the way that this looks. I really, really do. I kind of like, it's just, I don't know. It works for me. I don't get it, but uh, let's get her open, shall we? Also, this is pretty cool to talk about. I have, like I said, I've been to my own Monster Jam show now, and I got the uh, the yearbook out of the, or I got the yearbook from a stand. And when you get the yearbook, you get the collector's poster. This is a bit of a side tangent, but I'll just show this real quick if I can. If I turn my 
camera here, you're gonna get to see my studio a little bit here and how I do things. And I look up, I have the official 2024 collector's poster right here, as you can see. And it's it's big. I didn't realize it was this big. I thought it was just a page in the yearbook. It's not. It's a full-size poster. But this is that poster. If you guys remember way back when on my channel, when I reviewed the 2024 poster, this is that poster. I actually have it now, which is really cool. So in a future video, if I do like a, a, a room tour or something, which I think was thinking about doing as my 500 subscriber special, just kind of showing like a day in a life of being me, a collector, and I might show this off in fully because it's it's really cool. It is a neat poster to just have sitting around. All right, back to what you guys are actually here for, which is the trucks. So let me see if I can get this back in place, tighten all that down. Okay, that's not right. Tilt, there we go. Okay, so here we go. Here it is the truck right here for Dragon. Like I said, we got the green body, weird green roll cage, and then orange tires set up, which is pretty cool. All of the dragon detail is here on this one, but once again, the sizing of the body is slightly off because the word dragon should reach all the way back to here and it doesn't. Excuse me. I don't know why that is. Really weird. Uh, I, like I said, I really don't know why that is. It's really strange. So having this little extra piece here of skin, nothing on it. Maybe it's the dragon logo. They didn't stretch it out far enough, but the wings are there, which is pretty cool. This side's exactly the same, but mirrored, you know, it's, it's weird. And then I kind of wish they would have painted the bumps across the top of the truck. I think that would have been nice. They did do the horns, which I think is great. The horns, if they would have left the horns green, that would have been really weird. But they did do that, and I am appreciative of that. So, you know, pretty good. Like, for what it is, it's pretty good. I like, like I said, I feel like the wheel and chassis setup weirdly works on this one. This one, on the other hand, I really dislike for a reason that does not... Actually, there's a few reasons why I dislike this. Here's the Monster Mutt Rottweiler. Now... If you guys may remember, recently I reviewed a 164 scale Monster Mutt Rottweiler that looks very strikingly similar to this one. And you want to know what I had to say about this? This is useless. We did not need this. This was a waste of money. I feel the exact same about this, but instead of paying almost $5 for this, I only paid like $1.25. So, yeah. I don't understand why recently Spinmaster has just been using Monster Mount Rottweiler as a new Nitro Neons truck. Like literally on this poster that I just showed you way at the top of it, they have Monster Mount Rottweiler with red tires and a red roll cage. It looks horrible. I don't know why they keep doing this. It doesn't make any sense to me. I swear to God, the Mutt trucks are absolutely hated by Spinmaster. They never get good versions anymore. It's honestly kind of sad. But anyway, here... Oh my god, are you kidding me? Why? Okay, let's get into it. We got a black body, black roll cage, chassis setup, and then black or orange tires and rims here. No window inserts or anything. On the side pedal, you got the Monster Mutt logo there. Monster Jam logo, you got the collar here with the little beads on it. You got the jowls, the teeth, the gums, all that jazz, all that right there. Uh, and then on the back, you got the Monster Mutt Rottweiler pendant. I'm glad they painted that in. Now, let's get to the first problem that I have with this truck. The first big problem that I have with this truck. Now, obviously, they're not going to paint the top very much. I'm fine with that. They didn't bother to do any of the fur detailing. I'm fine with that. The ears are up in the air. You know how long we've been campaigning for Spidmaster to put the ears down on the mutts, and they finally did it? And this one has the ears up. That is like almost a big middle finger from Spin Master in a way, the fact that they did that. And the tail is curved on the back. No Monster Mutt has ever had a curved tail that does this, or has it ever been attached to the truck? It should have been straight. And I, I get that it's cool that they left it on there, but they could have probably just pulled the Hot Wheels and not put the tail on there and everybody would have just been fine with it. I don't know. Anyways, that is Monster Mutt Rottweiler right there. Yeah. Also, by the way, huge news. Like, this is actually huge. I am shocked. Um, that same series, the rough crowd, where we're getting the red Monster Mutt Rottweiler that I talked about on this poster, right next to it is a Monster Mutt Dalmatian, but it's a mystery truck. You can't see it. It has been confirmed that that truck is going to come out in Series 4 of 2024, and it's a Monster Mutt Dalmatian with the ears down. After two years of asking for Spin Master to put the ears down on Dalmatian, they finally do it. And as a big middle finger to us almost, the truck does not look realistic whatsoever. 
but it's got the ears down and I guess that's what matters. So at least they were able to give us that. So out of the three things that Spidmaster absolutely refused to do, we finally get to check one of those off the list. Now all we need is a black El Toro Loco with chin hair and a normal green Avenger and Spin Master will have literally rid themselves of all of their major problems for now. I was so excited when I saw that. I was like, oh my God, it's like we literally just ended a chapter of the story right there because they finally did it. But who knows, this El Toro Loco that's on the, or wait, yeah, this El Toro Loco here is a part of Legacy Trucks. It could be a black El Toro Loco with chin hair. And if that's the case... Man, oh man, that's going to be hype. And then we might get a green, normal Green Avenger in the two packs this year. They could literally fix all three of their fans' biggest complaints about them in one year. Like, that would be shocking. Anyway, one final truck to go. Let's end this out. We've got Megalodon here. It is a pretty, a pretty good-looking Megalodon. I'm not going to lie. This actually looks really solid. Let's open it. Um, I should have picked this probably as my favorite truck of the video. Because now that I'm looking at it in the light, I don't think I see a single thing wrong with this truck necessarily. I think for what it is, it is literally perfect. Like, I think they nailed it. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think they nailed this. This is spot on. Holy crap, this is spot on, actually. The only gripe that I have is that they could have done the gums in pink or red. But other than that, guys, we just got a Megalodon here. That's nice. So yeah, we got a blue body, black chassis, black tires, pretty cool. Got the fin here. They didn't paint the fin, which I kind of understand why they didn't do that. Megalodon, Moscham, and then you got the texture skin, black eyes, white teeth. And then if they would have just done some pink right here for the gums, I think this literally would have been perfect. I don't think I would have had a single complaint about this. Like that is a good way to end this set. But anyway, everybody, that is it for today's video. Uh, Let's get these guys on the turntable and then we'll close this thing. There you go, that's the full set right there. I'm not gonna lie, I paid $6.25 for this full set right here, I think. $6.25, that does sound correct. I don't. I, I think it was worth it. I give this set a thumbs up. For $6.25 American, that is, this is a good set right here. Like I said, there's like little small complaints that I have with each truck. So like for example, Gravedigger should have had headlights. El Toro Loco should have had more detail on it in general. Dragon, Dragon's fine. I'm going to be honest. Dragon, I think Dragon's fine. Rottweiler could have had a lot more done to it. Megalodon is also fine, but could have maybe had some gum detail as well. But other than that, this set is, this set's perfectly fine. I think for what it was and for how much I paid for it, this was worth it. I think this is good. But anyway, I want to thank you all for watching. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for this week. Well, technically, well, uh, well, I'm actually, I don't know if you guys notice this or not, but I have a weird up, upload schedule going on right now where I'm doing like a video a day starting Mother's Day ending on my graduation day, which is pretty hype. I'm officially graduating from high school, so that's cool. Um, but uh, yeah, basically the way, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to get this entire month's worth of videos done. So that way I'm all caught up when I go to restart, but that way I can take a break because I need to just not think about YouTube for a while. I've, these last couple of months of school have been nothing but stress 
And it, the thing is, is it has nothing to do with school either. It's just, I, I, I'm not going to talk about it for obvious reasons, but good Lord, you know, people suck. Let's just put it that way. Anyways, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next Diecast unboxing video. Thank you and good night.